the Caribbean Sea has blessed us with many natural resources, and CMOS is no exception. But like so many of these resources, natural stocks of CMOS are being depleted at an alarming rate. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Science for All, a program created by NIHUS to present the issues and developments in science and technology as they relate to our everyday lives. CMOS's proven nutritional benefits, combined with its legendary status as a sexual tonic, explains its high demand as an ingredient in many beverage and food products, a demand that has led to the depletion of its natural stocks. This week, Science for All travels to Lowlands Tobago, where we'll speak with researchers at Buku Trust on their efforts to develop low-cost cultivation methods for a viable CMOS industry. So stay tuned and enjoy. Something spring up for the fountain of youth. If it on a mountain peak in the sky, people going for a bad look okay, if they die. Imagine a man a hundred years old. See him be climbing a greasy pole. You could be old like any King Kong. As you take the bath, you come in back young and then see me great grandfather playing hot scotch and fishing marble. And my great grandmother with a hula hoop making trouble. The old people today in town, you could hear them talking both when they was young. But with the fountain, they will be bold. The whole talk will change to when they was old. When I was a youth, we used to go around, um, I'm from Plymouth one of the largest fishing area in Tobago. Um, Seamoss wasn't so much abundant, when at, but at certain times, especially October, November, when the sea is rough, you get abundant of Seamoss wash ashore. And we used to go pick and carry home for mom, and she'll make punch, you know, the set punch, or porridge. Right? This is something that I, I know. But now, you know, see that amount of CMOS that I usually see, right? And it, 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 it's more in, in wanted now. It's more the need, but it is not um, in abundant like how it used to be. It's dying out. And my great-grandmother with a hula hoop making trouble. The old people today in town, you could hear them talking both when they was young. But with the fountain, they will be bold. The whole talk will change to when they was old. Seamoss is a very popular uh, local food, all right? And once upon a time, it used to be abundant. Uh, I remember when I was younger, I used to go with my brothers. Well, I live at Mount St. George, all right? And there's this beach close by called Study Park. Seamoss uh, was abundant there. We used to go to Study Park, dive about two to three meters to the, to the floor of the, of, the, of the sea there and pick as many sea, seaweeds as they could before their breath ran out and they'd resurface and well they do that a couple of times until they fill about two or three of those feed bags of sea moss right and we'll process it and and sell it but today that is that has all changed because we can no longer find sea moss at study park and this i suspect is because of the indiscriminate harvesting that has happened over time now this situation is very, is very common in Tobago at other sea moss harvesting sites around Tobago where the stock has been depleted you know, and it's very scarce these days. Only about, about two or three areas that we find that the stocks are healthy and somewhat abundant. Believe it or not, I'll mention my name, the spoiler, to tell you this I actually... Well, it's getting scarce and will be caused... Most people say it's because of um, the development and hotels and things that come and 
closer to the, the waterfront, causing the causing it to yes to be declined. Old people today who know that they all never a chance to dance rock and roll. There's a, a high demand for CMOS in Tobago, you know, it, within the tourism industry, even uh, for local use, right? It's very popular. It, I mean, it has a repetition of being an aphrodisiac, and I guess that's why it's <laughs> all depleted now. You know, like when someone drink a Guinness, they say, yo, power. When you drink that, you feel, you know, <laughs> you feel extra. You feel extra in it. People that tell me, well, this thing working, but, you know, some people say, like, if you want to get boy children, you know, you see most, you know. While I'm living here, hundreds of people come to here to buy. I understand that it's very useful, it's very good, it's nutritious, it helps quite a lot of people in back pain if you do it the right way, and it's quite a cooling and things like that. Yes, it was once abundant, and because of the over-harvesting, it's now difficult to, to find it anywhere, right? But the demand is still there, right? Now, we at the Boko Reef Trust realize that the cultivation of CMOS offers an opportunity for sustainability. I'll be walking about the place, getting women with me youthful face. I'll be flying like an aeroplane because I come back young. There are about 10 varieties that, that I know of that are used in the Caribbean. Here in Tobago, we concentrate on, on just one, that is GT. We refer to it as GT, or most of the harvesters refer to it as the bearded variety. Right? It's, it's uh, deep brown to red in color, right? it's cylindrical in shape, and it looks like a bed. So I guess that's why they call it the bearded variety. Right? That's the basic one that is harvested. Now there's another one that is less, is less recognized or less popular. That is called Gracilaria domingensis. Right? It is flatter, and it has more projections on the, on the front of it. That's the, like the stem of it. Right, that is referred to locally as the centipede variety. Right, but traditionally, most harvesters have rejected that variety. However, in all working with the both variety over the last year, we realized that the, the Gracilera domingensis, that has a lot of advantages over the, um, the more traditional type. Right, it's easier to prepare. The gel that it produces is of a higher quality, right? And also, the, the problems you get with cleaning the, the traditional GT or the bedded variety, you don't have that sort of problem with the, with the domingensis, right? So, you know, we are now presently looking at the domingensis as, a, as a, a very good prospect, you know, to establish the industry. The one I mostly harvest is the, the flat one. Okay. Yeah, it, the people more like that one, all right. I used to harvest the other, the, the, the long one, but it seems like it gets, it, the people don't like it much, so I'm trying to please the people. Well, first I should describe this, the, the sea moss a little bit. Um, well, it's a marine plant and it doesn't have true roots, right? It attaches to rocks by a structure we call the hole fast. It's something like a root that attaches the plant to the rock, right? Now the branches of the plant, we call them uh, fronds, right? These branches absorb nutrients from, the, from the, the water that is surrounding it. Now that makes it, that is what makes it so easy to cultivate. Right, in that you can just break a branch of sea moss, right, or frond, I should say, and insert it into some medium. Now, the medium that we have been using uh, has been rope, normal rope. Right? You would know that um, a rope is normally wound into three layers. Right? What we do, we twist the rope so that the layer of the rope opens up 
and we sort of weave the sea moss, right, the, the, the live plant, into the layers of rope. Right? And then we attach the, this rope to a raft that is floating out at sea. Now, the raft can be made of different material. You can use bamboo to make the raft. You can use um, PVC to make the raft. And you leave it there over time. Of course, you have to monitor it you know, so that you know, it's, it's not fouled or, or other things are not growing on, on the lines or, or animals like fish and crab and lobster are not feeding on the, on the plant. Right? And within a, a space of a month or six weeks, four to six weeks, you can harvest your sea moss crop. The only drawback with the Domingensis is that it doesn't lend itself to the cultivation methods as does the traditional variety because it's very brittle. You know, the, um, the plant itself is very brittle, so it's not easily attached to a, to a medium for, for, for cultivation. But um, it does generate itself by spores, you know, by the disposal of spores. And these spores, they attach to rocks, where there are rocks on the bottom of the sea, and the conditions are right. They attach there, and they grow, right? So what we've been doing, we've been looking at um, areas where we see this Domingensis growing naturally, and we are attempting to enhance the habitat by putting down rocks in the empty spaces where there are no rocks or just sand. We are putting rocks there to see if these spores will recruit or catch on to these rocks naturally and begin to grow. So we're looking at that at present. I am trying to sustain it so that each and every can come back to, to the same condition I know how it was. You know, trying to teach the, the guys around the country the sustainable way about how to maintain seamounts, how to go in a proper way. I feel very proud of doing this to help to sustain the establishment of seamounts in Tobago. As we've just seen, the findings of this research have the potential to not only replenish Seymour stocks, but also to improve the livelihoods of many in the coastal villages of Tobago. The identification of cultivation methods for CMOS produces a ripple effect that extends beyond the harvesters and suppliers. Steady supplies of high quality CMOS means greater business opportunities for housewives, bed and breakfast owners, and all others interested in creating CMOS products through life processing. I'm Maxine Williams. On behalf of Nihus, thank you for having joined us on our Science for All series, where we explored community science, science as it affects our everyday lives. Just because the television series is over doesn't mean that we stop exploring. Please visit us at our website at www.nihus.gov, that's G-O-V, T-T where the journey continues. You mean about the song about Simos? <laughs> well, well, well there's, there's a song. Well, every, some people make their own song because, you know, some people have it as a helper, as I told you, you know, who is good for the back, some music sexuality thing and other things like that. So you'll find uh, other people have their song for it. But I love a song. Um, young people take my advice. Sea moss is very good for the back, so you must be continuing using a new sea moss sponge. That's it. Suppose it happen in truth, something spring up for the fountain of youth. If it on a mountain peak in the sky, people going for a bad okay if they die. Imagine a man a hundred years old, see him of climbing a greasy pole. You could be old like any King Kong, as you take the bath, you coming back young and then to make